Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, is that what you can do in the house of the Lord? Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Uh, before you take your seat, I want us to acknowledge the presence of the father of the house. My brother from a different mother. <laughs> uh, uh, some of you don't know how deep and how high we go when the Lord connected us almost, I think, almost 23 years ago. And uh, uh, it's like David and Jonathan. I salute you, Dr. Prophet Barr. And let's celebrate our first lady. You see, you, you have a treasure in this house. You know, the Bible is so clear and so that a, sometimes a prophet is not welcome or honored in his own house. But if you know the treasure you have in this house, Amen. you will celebrate the man of God every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I salute you. And I celebrate you for uh, creating the atmosphere for me to be here uh, to speak to you. And I believe that your life shall never, ever be the same. And we celebrate the elders of the house, the deacons and the deaconesses. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, for a moment, I will not be long. Uh, like I always say, I'm short, so everything needs to be short and concise and precise. Uh, I want you to just close your eyes, lift up your hands, and open your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord. Just speak 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 to the Lord for a second. Just release. Release yourself in the realms of the Spirit. Just speak to the Lord. Karabadose, Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises as your people. Declare your mighty words. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who wants and lives and lives to come. Blessed be Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, who wants to be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, Lord God Almighty, who reigns. Father, we thank you. We acknowledge your presence. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Without you, we are nothing. Move among us. Speak to us in a way that we will understand. Reveal yourself to us this afternoon. May your name be lifted up. May your name be glorified. May your name be magnified. We exalt you. 
Lord, I stand before your throne room of grace. I decrease myself, Lord, increase in me. As I open my mouth to speak, speak through me. Touch my tongue. Touch my spirit. Touch my ears. And let me declare your oracles into the life of your people. We thank you. We give you praise. We honor you for your deposits and your residence anointing in this place. Be glorified. And all the saints of God shall say, Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and please take your seat in the house of the Lord. Amen. For the past three days, um, Friday, our sister went to be with the Lord. We did her homegoing ceremony. Friday, Saturday, that was yesterday, we lay her mortal body remains to rest. But there is something that Prophet Dr. Ba spoke about that touched my heart last Friday. And he said that that was deep. Those of you who were there maybe may recall that. That the last time, probably maybe the, uh, leaving the hospital, that our sister said, good night. And he said that when he got down, he began to get the deeper revelation of the word that was spoken good night. And he made us to understand that when you say good night, it's not a goodbye. Which means that when you say good night, you are expecting the morning. This afternoon, I stand here as an apostle of God to declare into your life that you shall see your morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And on this very note that I want to submit to you uh, some 30 and we will read from verse number 1 to 5 some 30 three zero. One to five, and after that, uh, we will jump to 11 and 12. Hallelujah. And I believe that the Spirit of the Lord will enact his word in this place. Amen. Psalm 4, uh, sorry, sorry, Psalm 30, uh, verse 1 to 5. Yes. It's 1, verse 1. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. And have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord your saints, you saints of his. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Verse 11 and 12. Verse 11. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Hallelujah. I want us to, I will circle on a verse, or I will settle on verse number five. And I want us to read verse number five together. Let's go. For, For his, his anger, anger is but 
for, for a, a moment. moment. His favor, favor is, is for life. life. We, we may make endure for, for a night, night but, but joy, joy comes, comes in, the in the morning. Hallelujah. Uh, may the Lord add his blessing to his holy reading. Psalm 30 is traditionally attributed to King David and is often understood as a psalm of thanksgiving and praise. Uh, the background of this psalm reflects a moment of personal deliverance and divine intervention in David's life. Uh, though the specific circumstances uh, aren't explicitly uh, detailed within the text. Uh, scholars and uh, theologians have offered a few interpretations that might explain the underlying reason behind the composition of this psalm. And I'll probably maybe give you about, maybe about four of those, um, which I will not go into details, just mentioning them. Uh, number one, uh, it was believed that um, that was the time uh, David dedicated the temple or David's house. But we ruled the temple out because David did not build a temple. His son did. So perhaps it was after maybe probably put his house. Uh, that's what some of the theologians are coming out with. Uh, secondly, we can also say that it, it's a recovery from illness or deliverance from death. As you read the whole passage, you will understand that it said, um, for you healed me. Which means some believe that there was some kind of affliction that was engulfed in David's life. But uh, through the mercies of God, God delivered him from death. Uh, others also say it's a lesson of Pride and humility. They, you know, sometimes God can lift us to some places and uh, we might be doing things and we think that we've arrived. And all those things that are being done in our life, we think that probably is our own might or our own strength. But David discovered that where he is and where he has come to was not by his might nor by his strength, but by the mercies and the strength of God. Hallelujah. So he put his pride aside because sometimes we must take the jacket of pride off and put on the garment of humility. Hallelujah. And some also say in a broader sense, like a, a, a broader reflection of God's faithfulness. Now, if I say God's faithfulness, what do I mean? It's like David had gone through the trials, tribulations, had run from cave to cave. His enemies are pursuing him. And in all these, God had what? Delivered him. So he saw the faithfulness of God in his life. So we attribute Psalm 30 as God's faithfulness. So in summary of the background, I can say that Psalm 30 captures the essence of human vulnerability and divine mercy. It reflects David's acknowledge, acknowledgement that regardless of the specific trials he faced, it was God's intervention that brought him through and gave him reason to rejoice. This psalm serves as a powerful reminder that no matter the depths of despair, God's deliverance can bring about restoration and joy. And this morning I'm here to speak to someone I don't know where you find yourself in the scale of life. I don't know where the vestiges of life has placed you. But I'm here to tell you that the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. And the Bible says in Psalm 35 said for his anger is but for a moment. His favor 
is for life. The favor of the Lord upon your life is everlasting. I'm here to declare the favor of God upon you. Hallelujah. And he said, for weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In life, we go through certain situations. Life is not always in ascendancy, but sometimes it's like a roller coaster. To some of you, some, it took me a while for me to uh, uh, ride these high co roller coasters for years upon years when I took my children to uh, Universal and Disney and all of those things. When they go on the roller coasters, I don't want to know anything about it. But it took me a while for me to muster that courage to go on one. And since then, I've been doing it. All right? So life is like ups and down. So the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night. So in everybody's life, there's a night season. There's a night, what? Season. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. So in this five year, we realize that there was a profound two statement that I, I want to dwell on. It's a, uh, the weeping may endure for a night. That's the one statement. And the closing statement of five says, but joy comes in the morning. That's a second statement. And we need to understand those statements. And there are some little, there are some verbs that are in this statement that conveys a message. Weeping may endure for a night with the emphasis on the word may. Weeping may endure for a night. The emphasis is the word may. The may in its own entirety gives us, number one, a possibility, not a certainty. A possibility and not what? A certainty. The use of may in weeping may endure for a night suggests that while weeping or sorrow is a possibility, it is not a permanent state. It acknowledges that life includes periods of pain or grief, but it does not guarantee that these will last indefinitely. The word may leaves open the possibility that the duration of sorrow could vary. It might be brief or it could linger longer, but it is ultimately temporary. Uh, that is to say that uh, here it provides comfort because it implies the sorrow is not an unchangeable or eternal condition. It allows for the hope even in the darkest time and the situation could change and the dawn of joy could come sooner. So this morning I'm here to tell you that your situation is not permanent. That thing that you are going through is not permanent. That pain in your life is not permanent. It's conditional. Joy is coming. There is a change in your life. There's a change in your atmosphere. Whatever you experience and embrace is a temporary thing. Whatever the enemy is whispering into your spirit is a temporary thing. It's not the final say in your life. God is changing the order. I'm here to speak to you that today marks the beginning of the ninth month. Hallelujah. The beginning, there's something about the ninth month. The ninth month is prophetically, is a month of delivery. There's a vision in your life. 
you have harbored some dreams and aspirations. You started January till now, and it looked as if the enemy was toying with your life. But I've come here to deliver the word of God. Whatever is in your life, the dreams can never be aborted. Your visions shall never be aborted. This month, you shall deliver. This month, you shall deliver. Whatever is in your life, you shall give birth to. You shall give birth to your business. Ah, change is coming to your marriage. Change is coming to your marriage. Change is coming to your business. Change is coming to your relationship. Change is coming. Weeping may endure. May endure. It's not the final say in your life. It's conditional. Somebody say it's conditional and it's temporary. Hallelujah. The word may. Thank you, Jesus. The word may also gives you the temporary nature of suffering. The use of may here also emphasizes the transient nature of suffering. While the night might bring weeping, it is not the end. So just that the night of sorrow has an end point. Somebody say end point. Uh, implying that suffering is limited in duration. And there is a possibility of a new beginning with the morning. Whatever we go through has an end point. But it's left to us our own decision. Whether you want to endure and stay for, the, for God to show up in the morning. Many of us are going through our darkest state, but we thought that that is the end. But the Bible tells us that weeping may endure, which means that it's a temporary condition. It's not the end point. Some of you, your finances are not good. It's not permanent. It's temporary. You are coming to an end point of suffering. You are coming to an end point of financial scarcity. You are coming to an end point. Because everything that is not good has an end point. So the situation you can envisage in your life that is not actually speaking well to you has an end point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It serves as a reminder that hardships are temporary just as night inevitably gives way to morning. Sorrow may give way to joy that provide this provides a sense of hope and encouragement to those experiencing difficulties. Today you shall receive hope. Hope is being born in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See gives us hope and uncertainty again. From the word may. Uh, carries its sense of uncertainty. And, but it leaves room for hope. So in uh, everything that you go through. That you may think that is so bad. There is an element of hope to it. You may think that your story is so bad, but until you hear someone's story, and you will realize that you are living in heaven. You think the world has rejected you. You think that everything is against you. Wait until you hear someone's story. And when you hear someone's story, you begin to give thanks to the Lord. That there is hope for tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Weeping man do gives you that sense of hope that in spite of whatever is going on, the length and breadth of it, there is hope for you. The, the last aspect of May gives us the conditionality of sorrow. Also introduces a sense of conditionality a sorrow might come, but it also might pass. This reflects the unpredictability of life's 
challenges. Where sorrow is neither guaranteed nor permanent, the conditionality offers comfort by reminding us that sorrow, though real and sometimes intense, hallelujah, sometimes what? Intense does not have the final say. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It's okay. <laughs> so, the devil, tell to yourself that devil that is whispering into your ear, that devil has no final say in your life. Your destiny is assured, your promises are intact. You may go through some temporary stuff. Don't give up yet. Don't do, don't throw in. The towel is not an end yet. God is about to show up. And the B aspect of it says that, but joy. Somebody say, but joy. But joy comes in the morning. Without the weeping and during in the night, you don't see the joy. For Jesus to have the name above all names and at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. He got to go through some dark times. That it look as if the father has withdrawn from him. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatani, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? The Jesus went through the darkest time, but in the midst of the darkness, light was about to be born. Let me tell you, your challenges and situations you are going through is a stepping stone to your blessing. If you don't learn how to endure in your darkest moment, then your morning will not show up because you don't know how to celebrate the morning. Are you here with me, somebody? So it's a bad joy comes in the morning. But joy comes in the morning. But that, that went through the main emphasis is the word but. But it is a contrast between temporary and permanent. This statement here is talking about temporary things and permanent things. But it highlights the contrast between the temporary nature of weeping and the enduring nature of joy. Weeping is confined to the light, night. Sorry, weeping is confined to the night. A metaphorical period of darkness or struggle, while joy is associated with the morning, a symbol of new beginning and enduring light. I speak to you this morning, there's a new beginning coming to you. I said, Receive a new beginning. Receive a new beginning. That's a mystery. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain for my soul. If I live, I live for you. If I die in all my ways, I'm ever yours. In all my ways, I'm ever yours. If I live, I live for you. In all my ways, not some ways, I'm ever yours. If I live, I live for you. So it's not some ways. In all our ways, all things work together for good to them that love God according to those that are called. So when the bad things come, embrace it with, uh, with love. Because the good things is a sign that the good things are on the way. In all my ways. But joy comes 
in the morning. But joy comes in the morning. It underscores that while sorrow is real, it is fleeting. In contrast, joy is more lasting and resilient. Imagine as the prevailing force in the morning, this contrast offers reassurance that the difficult times we face are not permanent and sometimes uh, something, sorry, something better is on the horizon. I'll speak and project to you that your darkest hour is over. Your morning season is over. There is a shift in the realms of the spirit. The darkness is giving way to light. The dawn is breaking. You are moving into your morning. You are moving into your celebration. You are moving into your exaltation. You are moving into your expansion. You are moving into your double honor. You are moving into your elevation. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is shifting your life. Ah, tomorrow people may not recognize you. You shall be celebrated wherever you stand. In the name of Jesus, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy is coming to you. I've moved through some darkest period in my life. Periods that you may think that God, why have you forsaken me? Some of you think that men of God are saints. Some of you think that men of God are people that are, no, are, are under no reproach. But in all these, the Lord spoke to me and said, I am with you. At times, it looks as if you got to just give up. It doesn't work anymore. Because when you are going through your weeping time, uh, you are weak in the spirit. You are weak in the physical. Everything doesn't work. The more you fast, the more the problem ascends. The more you pray, it looks as if you hit the wall. There's no breakthrough. But God says, I am with you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. How many of you are ready to endure the night because your season of mourning is about to show up in your life? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When a dear one is taken from your life, you may think that that's the end of life. But God says to be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. Sometimes we must go through the dying process in order to be resurrected in a new body, in a new form. Some ideas need to be changed. Some habits need to be broken. Some things need to be changed in your life for you to get to the place where you can receive the fullness of God. Because you cannot put a new wine in an old wine skin because ours is going to best because God is about to download new things in your life, new ideas in your life, new businesses in your life, new things in your life. The old things need to be broken in order for you to receive the fullness of God. Because otherwise when God downloads it, he's going to destroy you. It's going to break you up. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I don't know what you've been through last year. 
I don't know what you've been through the past five years. Uh, even I don't know what you've been through this year. Uh, to some of you, maybe even last night or last week. But there's one thing that I can assure you this morning. That God is visiting you. That story is over. That story is over. That negativity is over. Uh, that poverty is over. Somebody is saying that uh, I, I don't know how. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, I'm young, uh, but I don't have, no man has come to me to propose to me. But let me tell you, that story is over. Somebody is saying I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing, uh, but I don't have, uh, anytime I propose to ladies, they don't even accept my proposal as if there's a cage or something that has been enshrouded or a cloud over my head. That story is over. Somebody says that any time I take my money and invest into any business, when the business begins to go up, all of a sudden something happens and that business doesn't work anymore. My money is dwindled. That story is changing. There is a shift in your life. There is a shift in your life. Somebody is saying my body is afflicted. The doctor says they can't do anything about it i'm here to tell you that story is changing weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning divine healing is coming to you divine restoration is coming to you divine blessing is coming to you I'm walking into my blessings. I'm walking into my ascendancy. I'm walking into oh, the limit is broken. I said the limit is broken. The limit is broken. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I hope you are being blessed. That but here brings hope. The bat here also brings certainty of divine intervention. But joy comes in the morning. There is a divine intervention in your life. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I have been? But if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Weeping man, do you for a night, but joy comes in the morning that joy that but joy comes in the morning also introduced into our lives encouragement to endure encouragement to endure this morning you are empowered this morning you are encouraged don't give up there might be pain in your heart don't give up. You are encouraged to sustain. You are encouraged to keep on keeping on. The, the word of the Lord says that after I've done all that I can to stand, stand. You got to stand in no matter what. You got to stand whatever the enemy brings into your life. Because why? Morning is coming into your life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The contrast introduced by but encourages patience and resilience. It suggests that enduring the hardship of the night is worthwhile. Because the morning brings joy that outweighs the sorrow. If you will count the blessings that the Lord has blessed in your life, 
and you put them in one bucket and you bring all your sorrows and your pains and the trauma and the stuff that you've gone through and bring it to another pot you will realize and put them on a scale and you realize that your good days the blessings of the Lord outweighs the bad days in conclusion weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning the word but is the far crumb and I say that again. The word but there is a fulcrum upon which the whole meaning of the statement balances. I say that again. The word but there is a fulcrum of which that whole statement balances. It shifts the focus from the inevitability of sorrow to the promise of joy. It's a sharp contrast. <laughs> Today people are making a mockery out of you and tomorrow they see you and they see a change. A, a new whole person. The Bible is a powerful reminder that no matter how difficult the night may be, it is not the end. And something far better is assuredly on its way. People will see you and they will not recognize you. I stand here and I declare with the prophetic oil in this house combined with the apostolic grace upon my life, your life has changed. There is a shift in your life. You're not going back the same. Today marking the beginning of greatness in your life. Beginning of laughter in your life. Beginning of joy in your life. Beginning of a joy unspeakable. Ah, you are being connected to your dream helpers. I speak by the prophetic grace of God in this place. And the apostolic grace upon my life. God is lifting you up. You, you are being lifted up. I said you are being lifted up. You are being lifted up. Your season of sorrow is over. Your season of contention is over. Joy, joy, blessing, joy, peace, joy is reaching out to you. There is a divine intervention in your life. I don't care what you've been through, but I'm here to tell you that God has visited you. There's a divine visitation upon your life. Divine visitation upon your life. Somebody shout, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, but joy, but joy, but joy, but joy comes in the morning. My joy, my joy, my joy. My joy come in the morning. Oh, come on, I do not see under. Somebody said, I am in my season of joy. I am in my season of celebration. I am in my season of lifting up. But joy, but joy, but joy, but joy. But joy, but joy, but joy, but joy, but joy comes in the morning. In closing, hear this. I will not go into details. But in my darkest period, in my darkest hour, when I thought that I am done, that was the time God showed up. As a matter of fact, in my darkest time, the accomplishments in my lives outweighs what I thought was my good times. The ways of the Lord are different. He said, my ways are not your ways. Neither my thoughts are your thoughts. 
but I will bring you to that expected end. Somebody shout, my joy has come. My joy has come. My joy has come. But joy, but joy. Do I have some people here who have the joy of the Lord? Because the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We be made do for a night, but joy, but joy, 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 joy comes in the morning. Please lift, stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. I wanted to just pray this prayer that I am in my season of joy. Forget about what had gone wrong. Focus on the presence of God. Lift up your eyes to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of your faith. Just lift up your voice. You know, in the, in the innermost of your being, you know what you've been through. But this morning, we reaffirm in this house that God has visited you. Just speak and tell God that my joy has come. I'm in my season of joy. Oh, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so. Every breath I will sing. For the last time, all my life, you've been faithful. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the good. Father, in the name of Jesus, I present your servants and her maidens before you. You know the innermost being of them. You know what you're going through and what they've been through. I pray for your divine intervention in their lives. As your word says that weeping men do for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So you turn our mourning into dancing again. Lord, turn their mourning into dancing. Let them smile again. Let them praise again. Let them speak of your goodness again. That every weakness in their life be broken and be replaced with your strength. I declare your favor upon their lives. And I speak that in the realms of the spirit and both let it manifest in their physical realm that they are in their season of joy. That as they leave this place, oh God, they step into their atmosphere of joy. We activate your presence upon their lives. They are angels of hell. They are angels of grace. In the name of Jesus, be God in their lives. We thank you, O oh God. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Before I give the microphone to our, our father in the house,